Imagine welcoming a newborn into your life, only to find yourself shouldering the entire burden of childcare, while your partner remains glued to his computer screen. That's my reality, and after countless sleepless nights and desperate pleas for help, I reached my breaking point. In a moment of frustration, I sabotaged my husband's online gaming tournament, and now I'm being painted as the villain. Am I the asshole for demanding my husband's support, or is there something deeply wrong with this picture? Here's the full story, and I need your perspective. My husband Jake, 30M, and I, 27F, recently welcomed our first baby, Emma, who is now three months old. Like all new parents, we've been facing challenges that come with sleepless nights and constant diaper changes. Since I'm on maternity leave, I'm taking care of Emma during the day, but I still need help from Jake, especially at night. Jake works from home and is an avid gamer. He spends most of his free time playing online games with his friends. I've tried to be understanding and give him space, but it's been hard when he refuses to help with Emma at night. Even though I've asked him multiple times to take turns caring for her during the night, he often says he's too tired or that he has an important game. Breastfeeding has been particularly difficult. Emma often struggles to latch properly, leading to painful and sometimes cracked nipples. I've had mastitis twice already, which leaves me feeling feverish and in intense pain. Despite seeing me in pain, Jake just laughs it off, finding it amusing. He never offers to help during these moments, even though I'm visibly struggling and desperate for support. One night, I'd had enough after I'd been up with Emma for the third time, and Jake was still glued to his computer. I went into his office and asked him to take over so I could get some sleep. He waved me off, saying he was in the middle of a game, and I should just handle it. He added, you're on maternity leave and free all day while I have to work, so I need time to relax. You're just sitting around doing nothing all day anyway. I was exhausted and on the verge of tears. I needed his help, but he was completely dismissive. In a moment of frustration and desperation, I walked over to the router and turned off the Wi-Fi. That's when Jake completely lost it. He stormed out of his office, screaming at me. Apparently, he and his friends were in some sort of online tournament, and they were about to win when I unplugged the Wi-Fi. He called me selfish and irresponsible, and accused me of sabotaging his one form of relaxation. He went on to say that I had no right to interfere with his me time, and that I should have just waited until he was done. I calmly explained that I needed his help, and that our baby was more important than his game. He refused to listen and continued to berate me, adding that I hadn't even been having sex with him, and that we'd only had sex four times since Emma was born. He accused me of wanting to take everything away from him, while doing nothing all day and sitting at home on my ass. Jake never helps during the day either, even after he finishes work at 5 p.m. I don't expect him to help during work hours, but once he's off, he should be stepping up as a parent. Instead, he goes straight to his games, leaving me to handle everything alone. Since then, he's been sulking around the house, barely speaking to me. To make matters worse, his friends have been sending me nasty messages, calling me a crazy wife and saying I'm unreasonable. One even suggested that Jake leave me because I'm too demanding. I feel like I'm losing my mind here. I'm just trying to get a bit of support. I'm exhausted and all I wanted was for Jake to step up and be a parent too. Instead, I'm being painted as the villain for wanting help with our newborn. AITA? Edit 1. For those saying why I married him and didn't I know this before, Jake was completely different before Emma was born. He was supportive and understanding. This behavior is new and shocking to me. Edit 2. To all those calling me the asshole, I am sorry. Your words cut deep, and I feel more hurt than I can express. I didn't turn off the Wi-Fi out of spite or because I couldn't handle my responsibilities. It was a desperate act after feeling completely unsupported and alone. I feel like I'm drowning in guilt and sadness. This time with Emma has been incredibly challenging. I'm constantly exhausted and in pain from breastfeeding. All I do is cry because I feel like such a failure. I just can't anymore. Jake works hard, and I appreciate him but his indifference to my struggles makes me feel so isolated. I spend my days and nights in tears, wondering if I'm failing as a mother and a wife. All I've wanted is for us to share the responsibilities of parenting, especially during those late night feedings and diaper changes that leave me feeling so drained. I've been struggling with feelings of sadness and guilt, wondering if I'm failing as a mother and a wife. It's not about controlling his downtime, it's about needing his support during this incredibly tough time. I wish you could understand the depth of loneliness and frustration I've been feeling. 
Your words about me being selfish and immature hit hard, because I've been questioning myself constantly. I never wanted to play the victim or make Jake out to be the bad guy. All I wanted was for us to work together as a team like we promised each other when we decided to start a family. I'm sorry if my actions hurt anyone, including Jake and his friends. I was overwhelmed and at my breaking point. I'm trapped in a cycle of guilt, feeling like everything is my fault. I never wanted to hurt anyone, I just don't know how to cope anymore. I'm not trying to be selfish, I'm just trying to survive. Edit 3. A lot of people are saying I am making breastfeeding a huge deal, and millions of moms do it too, but mastitis isn't just a minor inconvenience, it's an excruciating, throbbing pain that feels like shards of glass stabbing into my breasts with every suckle. Sometimes, the pain is so intense that I cry silently while Emma feeds, and I have to bury my face in a pillow to muffle my cries, because Jake has made it clear that my suffering is a nuisance to him. He says he is either working, gaming, or sleeping, so I should not disturb him. And some people are saying that even if this happens to me, then WTF, should he do here? Do I expect him to grow a breast and feed Emma? But no, I'm not expecting him to do that, I just want him to support me. He never offers to help during these moments, even though I'm in tears and desperately in need of support. First, I want to say that I initially posted just to find out if I was wrong for sabotaging my husband's tournament. I ended up sharing a lot of context, and I never expected to receive such an outpouring of advice on other issues. But oh my god, your responses have been the best thing that's happened to me lately. Your words have had a profound impact on me. From the bottom of my heart, thank you so much to all the mamas, dads, and everyone who offered their wonderful advice and educated me on postpartum depression (PPD). After reading everything, I immediately booked an appointment for the next day, and it turns out I do have PPD. I'll be starting therapy soon, and my doctor has also suggested joining a support group. I'm still considering it. I never thought I'd say this to random strangers, but I love you all. You've turned my life around. Thank you so 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 much to everyone who informed me about tongue ties. I went to see a doctor for this as well, and it turns out my baby has a minor, unnoticeable tongue tie that was causing all the latching issues. I scheduled an appointment later this week to get it corrected. I would have never known without your advice, and it would have continued to be a struggle. Yesterday, I was feeling so depressed, crying all day, but today, everything feels so much better. Each one of your comments made a difference. I've read almost all of your advice, Though I couldn't reply to every comment, I spent a lot of time reading, and each one touched my heart deeply. Again, thank you so much everyone. You are incredible. I am eternally grateful to everyone who DM'd me with their advice and resources like books, other subreddits and websites. I promise I'll reply whenever I get a chance. I saved a lot of comments because the advice was so invaluable. I'm amazed that so many people took the time to give detailed, thoughtful replies to me and my baby. I'll try to respond to you guys whenever I can. I hope you all understand. About the sex thing, thank you to everyone who made me aware that this isn't normal. I had been feeling guilty this whole time, thinking it's already been six weeks and wondering why I didn't want to have sex. Jake was gaslighting me into believing that my sex drive should be normal after six weeks and guilting me for not wanting to have sex. I felt very uncomfortable each of the four times we did, but I thought maybe it was just me. Now that everyone has shared how long their partners waited, and husbands have told me how long they waited for their wives to be comfortable, it made me realize how much I've been pressured unfairly. Also, there were a few gamer people who trolled me heavily for what I did, but most of the gamer parents, especially gamer dads, came forward and shared how wonderful they are as parents and how gaming comes after their child. The first hour after I posted this, I was harassed badly, especially by this one person, his account has been deleted by the moderators now. But after that horrific hour, most people were so supportive and nice. I was thinking of deleting my post after all the backlash from some gamers and a lot of men agreeing with Jake, saying that just because I am on maternity leave, I do nothing all day and shouldn't expect Jake to help because he is working and I am being unreasonable for wanting him to help out more. But thank God I didn't delete it, it would have been the worst mistake. Trust me, you guys, it's not just about the advice but the emotional support you gave me in a day, sitting miles away from me. My husband couldn't even give that in three months, being under the same roof as me. This made me feel so much better, realizing how much I needed this support. Again, thank you so much everyone. I still cry a lot and feel an overwhelming sense of guilt, like a heavy weight pressing down on my heart. 
There are moments when I feel like I'm failing as a mother and a wife, and the pain of those thoughts is unbearable. But thanks to all of you, I feel much better. Your words have been like a lifeline, pulling me out of the darkest depths of despair. Every comment and every message has been a reminder that I'm not alone in this struggle. I can't describe the relief of knowing that there are people who understand and care. It's like a warm embrace that I desperately needed, and I am very grateful for that. You've given me the strength to keep going, to fight for myself and my baby, and for that, I will never be able to thank you enough. Answering some questions asked a lot. How long have we been together? We dated for one year and five months before getting married, and have been married for about a year and four months. So in total, it is about two years and nine months. Was the pregnancy planned? Yes, it was planned, and actually it was his idea. I wanted to wait at least a year after getting married, but he made everything sound so good, like we would be such great parents, and how we would do stuff together, and how happy everything would be. I didn't need much convincing. I got very excited hearing all this, and had butterflies in my stomach. But now that I think of it, while we were dating, I remember him saying multiple times that it's his goal to get married and have a kid, before turning 30, Emma was born a month before he turned 30, so maybe he was just trying to achieve his goal. A lot of people, mostly men, are commenting that what they believe happened, is that we dated for few months, got pregnant and had to marry in haste, all within less than a year, and that's the reason he is being like this. According to them, I forced him into all this, because I am a bitch who baby trapped him and he never wanted to have a kid, but this is far from the truth. How long does my maternity leave last and is it paid or unpaid? I work at a well-known USA-based company that offers 16 weeks of paid maternity leave. Maternity leave can be extended up to 22 weeks, but those additional weeks will be unpaid. How does my income compare to his? I do make a little more money than he does annually, but I also have longer working hours. He usually works from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. with an hour break in between, so about six hours of actual work. Why did I have a baby with him when I knew he was so into gaming? No, he wasn't into gaming that much before. It was like three to four hours a day. After the baby came, he didn't game much for about a week, but after that, he was gaming 24 7, even during meals and work breaks. Once, I caught him working on the laptop during his work hours and gaming with his free hand. He is probably cutting a lot on sleep just to play. It would easily be 10 plus hours of gaming daily. Does he help with other chores? No, he very rarely does. I do all the chores like laundry, dishes, and vacuuming. Once, I threatened him that he must at least do his own dishes because I wouldn't do it anymore. And after that, he got a huge stack of disposable plates, spoons, glasses, etc. Honestly, I use those from his stock too, sometimes because I'm just so exhausted. I do most of the cooking. He'll boil eggs at the most, and that too, like two to three times a week. About three weeks ago, I was really mad at him because I'd asked him to change Emma's diapers if she pooped while I was at my gynecologist for a follow-up. He didn't change Emma's diapers, so I didn't make food for him for three days. He ordered DoorDash for all the meals. That's why even though a lot of people are asking me to leave him with Emma for eight hours, I don't know in what condition I'll find my baby when I come back. I was only gone for an hour and a half, and I came home to her crying and soiled while my husband had his headphones on. He claimed he didn't hear the crying. God knows how long my baby had been crying. I felt awful that night and cried myself to sleep, thinking, did she start crying as soon as I left and cry for the whole hour and a half? Also, I have no idea what I will do after I resume my job, and I barely have 10 weeks to figure everything out. I haven't thought about what to do about Jake as of now, but I'll let you know. A lot of people have suggested that I go to my parents' house or call my MIL, but it would create a huge scene if I did. My parents, especially my dad, are very protective of me since I'm an only child. If he knew how Jake had been treating me and our daughter, he would have taken me home immediately and divorced me, and Jake would have been in serious trouble, he doesn't like Jake already. And if my male cousins found out, I can't even explain what would happen to him. They are extremely protective of me as well. It's not that I don't want to be with my family or get their help, but I would have to explain the reason, and I don't want to do this to Jake just yet. Many people have mentioned that Jake might have PPD, too, because it's unusual for him to change all of a sudden like this. I still want to hold on to hope after reading all those comments about how therapy changed their husbands, 
and even some dads coming for, telling me how they used to be like Jake, and now they have changed. However, two two three days also DM'd me, saying they were like Jake and told me to run as far as I could. One of them said he ended up beating his six-month-old baby when he was crying, and another said he shook his baby. Oh my god, this terrified me. Jake is behaving awfully, but I think he would never do something like that. But after reading all this, I don't think I can leave Emma alone with him. I'm crying while writing this, but I want you all to know that when Emma grows up, I will make sure to tell her about the kind strangers who helped her and her mama in such difficult times. I'll tell her about the people who, even from miles away, reached out with their hearts and lifted us up when we were at our lowest. The tears I shed now are not just from the pain and exhaustion, but also from the overwhelming gratitude I feel for each one of you. I'll forever be grateful for your kindness and compassion, and I want Emma to know that in our darkest moments, there were angels who came to our rescue. Thank you for giving us the strength to carry on. I'll try to keep you all updated on how things progress. Sending love and gratitude to each and every one of you. Edit. Many of you are urging me to call my dad ASAP and get his help. Trust me, I understand why you're saying this, but there's something you should know about my dad. When it comes to me, he's incredibly hot-headed and protective. If my dad, cousins and uncles find out how Jake has been treating me, they will definitely go after him, and it won't end well. I'm scared they will face assault charges, or worse for what they'll do to Jake. Even if Jake decides to get therapy and changes, my dad will never let me try again with him. There's no way my family will allow Jake back into my life, once they know everything. It hurts every day when I have to hold back my tears while talking to my mom, dad, and other family members. It hurts to lie to my parents, to pretend that everything is perfect when I'm actually falling apart. Sometimes, I break down while on calls and I have to cut the conversation short, lying that Emma has woken up again just so they don't hear me crying. You don't know how much I want to tell them, how much I want their support, but I'm terrified of making a decision where there's no coming back from in such haste. I fear making a decision, in haste that leaves no room for redemption or reconciliation. I've been crying hysterically again. Jake even shouted from the other room, asking if I could keep it down. You're right, he won't change. He is so insensitive. Realizing how foolish I've been has hit me hard. You all made me see how stupid I am for not leaving Jake and going to my parents, and how I am putting both Emma's and my lives in danger. The thing that moved me the most, was when you told me to imagine if it was Emma being treated like this. Would I want her to keep quiet or tell me what's happening with her? That hit me so hard. I can't bear the thought of her going through what I'm going through. I've decided to talk to my family tomorrow, or the day after tomorrow. I need some time to think about what and how much to say to them, so the worst doesn't happen, and my family doesn't end up in jail. They love me a lot and have been protective of me since I was a kid. I also need to find and upload all the recordings from the CCTV cameras to my laptop, which will help me with custody if we end up getting divorced. I need time to figure out the recordings and CCTV stuff, so I'll probably call someone for help. I'm thinking of doing this discreetly when Jake is sleeping, because I am scared he might completely lose it. I know he probably won't even notice since he mostly sleeps between gaming and doesn't come out of the room. But then again, I've been an idiot about so much stuff already. So let me know if I should do it another way. If there are steps other than the recordings and important documents I should take before telling my family and leaving, please let me know, because I know once I leave, I won't be coming back. I know I don't reply often, but I read your comments and I promise I'll try to reply when things are better here. But please, I only have a little time and don't want to mess this up. You guys have scared the hell out of me with the possibilities of what could happen. You all are saying Jake will kill the baby, and I'll end up doing a funeral for my baby. Please don't say stuff like that. That's just a very cruel and mean thing to say. I have already been so depressed and crying, and now it feels like I am drowning again. Please, please, please stop saying that I'll end up with a dead baby. It's very, very insensitive even if you are saying this just so I would ask for help and leave Jake. Secondly, I know you must be thinking, why does this woman cry a lot? She is always crying, and she is pathetic, but I don't know what's happening to me. All I do is cry, and I wasn't like this before. I cried very little before giving birth, to be honest. I am just very overwhelmed. And to those who are saying bad things about my dad, calling him a psycho control freak with anger issues, Trust me, he is nothing like that. He is actually a very calm person, but he is very close to me, and extremely protective. Since I was little, 
he is being protective even when someone raises their voice at me. He is not a bad person. He just cares deeply about me, 